Okay, we're now recording. So Laura, you can take it away. Thanks, Sam. Um, well, everyone, again, welcome, Echo Sam's. Um, welcome to you and thank you for taking the time to meet with all of us today and learn a little bit more about the foundations. Um, competency of the new MAC curriculum. Um, we have three panelists and I'm going to let them introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about their role. Um, and then Jennifer Stevens is going to kick us off by sharing a little bit about how we got to these particular SLOs because they give you some context as you begin to think about foundation courses. So um, let's start with Jenny and then Jenny, if you can kick it off to someone after you. Sure, yes. Um, hello, I'm Jenny Dale. I use she, her pronouns, um, and I am a library faculty member. I'm the information literacy coordinator here at UNCG, um, and I have been involved in MAC from way before it was MAC. Um, and most recently, I served as the MAC Foundation's faculty fellow back in the spring of um, 2021 uh, and have been very involved in um, working with foundations courses. My particular area of expertise is information literacy. Um, so that has been a particular focus of mine um, in working with the MAC Foundations Competency course. And I will uh, turn it over to Emily to introduce herself. Thanks, Jenny. My name is Emily Wurz. Director with the New Student Transitions and First Year Experience. I specifically oversee the FYE 101 Succeed at the G course and program here at the university, um, which obviously fulfills the MAC Foundation's competency. We have about 70 sections this year between fall and spring, um, including our peer academic leaders and FYE instructors. Um, and we've been part of this process from the very beginning, so we're really excited to continue and have some further conversations um, with you all today. And I'll toss it over to Jennifer then. Thanks. Hello, everybody. I'm Jennifer Stevens. I'm the director of our residential colleges office um, in the University Teaching and Learning Commons. I'm also faculty in Educational Leadership and Cultural Foundations. And uh, like Jenny and Emily and Francis, um, was involved at multiple levels in um, a self-study that we did of first year experiences and first year seminars and transitions courses and content. Um, our general education program, which then led to the Gen Ed Task Force, which ultimately led us to, to this point of having foundations as part of Minerva's academic curriculum. Um, Francis, are you introducing yourself? No? Okay. <laughs> All right, Laura. Well, Jennifer, did you want to share your screen and go ahead and start a little bit about the history there that need, that'll start us off in this conversation around SLOs? Yes, for sure. Um, is everybody seeing my screen? Great. Um, so I thought it would be helpful in starting this conversation to have a little bit of insight at how we got here. Um, so as multiple individuals on the panel have mentioned, this was a multi-year process that led us to the development of foundations, competency, the SLOs associated with it, and its place in our Minerva's academic curriculum. To get to these particular foundations SLOs, we found through our research that the best foundational courses, transitions courses, student success courses had some things in common. And what we found with those things in common is they fit into these general types of content categories. So what you'll see when you look at these foundations courses is that they're essentially made up of three particular types of content and then paired with another type of content. So the first is transitions content. So what we mean when we talk about courses that are transitional or have transitions content is they are helping to foster student sense of belonging. So they're helping students create community within the classroom and within the campus community. They're engaging students in both the curricular and co-curricular life of the university. So they're engaging students in, in, a, in class and out of class activities. They're helping students understand what it means to be a college student at UNCG. So what are the expectations at the university for students and what are general faculty expectations for how students engage in, in learning? 
These classes, this type of content also helps students develop and apply critical thinking skills, and then also helps them think about where they are now and where they plan to be. So helping them clarify their sense of purpose, meaning, and direction. Coupled with that, then the foundations courses also include student success content. So that's that content that attends to students' transitions to college and to UNCG specifically. So as part of that transition, we want students to be able to connect with one another and sort of peer-to-peer -peer engagement, help students connect with their faculty and staff advisors, others who support them on campus through student to faculty, students to staff connections, and then helping students connect to the larger campus community, the services that are available at the university and the resources available to students. Additionally, student success content helps students develop academic skills. So some of those might be study skills, note-taking skills, time management, how it is that you read textbooks or different types of resources. And then the student success content also focuses on supporting personal development and student self-efficacy. So in addition to that, in our foundation's SLOs, we also have information literacy content. So this is the content that helps students evaluate their sources and the information where they're getting their information and also helps students develop skills for accurately and effectively incorporating those types of sources and information into their work. The fourth type of content is what you would then find in course specific SLOs. So these are broadly referred to in the foundation's SLOs but you would expect to see in the course specific SLOs, and those are the introductory academic content. So these are the kinds of content that introduces students to a particular discipline or a particular topic, and then provides that foundation for students to take that, that entryway into the discipline or into an interdisciplinary topic and expand on that for future study. So in our foundations courses, uh, we have, so if you think about our students at UNCG, we have a diverse student body, diverse needs. There are multiple ways to meet those needs through the foundations courses. And so in the development of this foundations competency, we provided the space for those different approaches to the foundations SLOs that meet students where they are. So on one hand, you might have courses that are built on this foundation of those foundation SLOs, right? Like, so it's, it's coming first from that transitional content, the student success content, the development of academic skills, the development of information literacy skills. And then we couple that with some disciplinary or topical content. So for example, students may early in the week, they're, they're focusing on how it is that you read text and take notes on that text and utilize that text for a particular purpose. And then later in the week um, that students look at a historical text and learn how it is that you utilize the footnotes in that text or how you utilize the citations that appear in the text to then find additional resources. And then how you use those multiple resources to pull that together in order to, to make your argument or, or um, generate your perspective. On the other hand, you may have courses like using that same type of example, there may be a history foundations course that use, utilizes those course specific history related introductory academic content as the kind of foundation. And then the foundations SLO, so the traditional, that transitional content, the um, academic support, student success content, the information literacy content is interwoven so you've got students studying a particular topic in history, they're reading a history text, then instead of having been introduced to note taking, for example, or how to approach a text early on, as they are using that text, they are then uh, scaffolded and like, intensively focusing on how it is that we use this particular text we're using in this class right now to same thing, look at the footnotes, triangulate our resources, that sort of thing. So there's, there's multiple ways that you can approach covering this foundation's content. Um, and Emily and Jenny are gonna be able to provide some really specific um, insights and examples into how faculty can, can do that, um, depending on the type of course that they're teaching. 
Great. Thank you, Jennifer, for that um, background. And so, you know, one of the big things is we, this is our second pedagogy specific focused Mac panel. And one of the things we, I think we learned in the last one is that folks visiting are really looking at how do I begin to operationalize and teach these SLOs, right? How do I begin seeing these SLOs show up in courses, whether it be an FYE course or whether it be a foundations course embedded in my discipline? How do I begin that process? And so maybe Jenny, if you'll start a little bit with information literacy, because I think that crosses a lot of boundaries, not just for this particular um, MAC competency, but also for health and wellness, um, and is an area that I think we all kind of curious, like where do we start with information literacy? Yeah, absolutely. So, um... My, I, I appreciate that Jennifer mentioned scaffolding because I really think scaffolding is one of the best ways to approach information literacy as well as the kind of academic skills content that Jennifer was describing at that point. Um, so it, the information literacy outcomes that are associated with foundations are really about evaluating sources uh, and about being able to cite them and bring them effectively into some kind of product. Um, and I think typically we think of a product like that as being a research paper. That's kind of our standard approach usually. Um, and there's nothing wrong with research papers. They can be great. Um, but I think one of the nice things about the foundations course is that I think you have a little bit more flexibility about what kind of information literacy uh, assignments and products that you can sort of uh, bring into the course itself. Um, so I've talked to some different um, foundations course instructors about how to kind of do this because um, I, the folks I've talked to are often like, well, I'm, I'm really feeling confident about the academic content or I'm really feeling confident about transitions. Um, but most people aren't that, I mean, I think they're coming to me because they're not as comfortable with information literacy. I'm sure plenty of folks are that have not reached out to me directly. But um, when I have talked to these instructors, one of the things that I've recommended is using small, low stakes assignments throughout the semester. So one of the ways that I see, and this is this is a long, you know, my whole career really. Um, so the past 16 years of teaching information literacy classes, I see um, a lot of, um, a lot of times we have maybe one assignment, one research assignment, and it's worth a big percentage of the grade. And uh, that puts students in a very high stakes situation where they haven't had a lot of chance to practice. And I think that's particularly challenging in a foundations course, um, because one of the things that we are trying to do is help them again, transition, um, from, you know, high school to, to college or transition from somewhere else to, to UNCG. And it's a good opportunity for us to um, really help students see what, what we're expecting from them in terms of research. Although I think it's important to note that, like, we shouldn't expect the foundation's course to teach students everything they need to know about doing research. This is a continuing um, process and skill set that they'll, that they'll develop up well, well into their sort of major study. But um, in terms of sort of operationalizing it, one thing I highly recommend um, is to, to make some homework assignments that again, have kind of low stakes information literacy outcome related content. So for example, if students have a reading response, add an element that they have to do a citation for the reading that they did. Um, not a big deal, not something where they're gonna get dinged for academic integrity violations, just something where you can say, all right, I'm seeing this issue um, from a lot of students about citations because they're not comfortable with our conventions that we are asking them to use. And it's easy for us as people who you know do research and who cite things a lot to forget that it's actually really challenging to get into that part of the process. Um, and you can do the same thing, I think, with evaluating sources, um, being able to uh, just add an element, you know, find, you know, find a website about the topic we covered this week about, um, you know, reading academic texts, going back to Jennifer's example earlier. Um, how did it help you? Why did you choose it? What do you think makes it a good source? Um, and that way, they're not only practicing those information literacy skills, but they're also kind of building their own toolkit of additional resources that they might be able to find. So those are some of the things 
um, that I would recommend. I would also highly, highly recommend talking to your librarian. Um, every academic department on campus has a liaison librarian. Um, I'm going to share a link here. I have, um, I was going to share a bunch of individual links and then I just put them all on a Google Doc. Um, and so that is, um, that's what I just put in there. And Sam just put in there a link that is included on that document about how to find your liaison librarian. If you, you know, don't like bookmark these in like a special like Mac, you know, uh, like close to your heart bookmark situation, you can always contact me and I can get you in touch with the person who can help. Um, but it, again, information literacy is my sort of specialty area in addition to being a liaison. So I'm also always happy to talk to you um, about how to develop these kind of small low stakes assignments, how to tweak your bigger, more higher stakes assignments so that you're getting more of what you um, what you want from those assignments. I think one of the things I hear from faculty a lot is like frustration um, that they're not getting the kind of product that they were expecting to get. And sometimes we can help with that because there's a lot of information literacy research out there from professionals about what makes a good assignment sheet and what kind of things trip students up um, that we can sort of really, you know, help you kind of figure out. So. Thanks. So, so Emily, I was wondering if you could take us down the kind of the next line of reasoning, um, having so many sections of FYE and seeing our students who, as they come in, what are some of maybe the key assignments or examples of assignments or examples of topic areas that you're finding are really resonating with our current students right now that folks should really be thinking about as they're thinking about a foundations course? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if there's anything extremely unique or specific, but really thinking about our first year students and best practices. Critical thinking is one I would say is probably important for all the MAC competencies, um, but in particular, our first year students, one, teaching them that it's important to take that time to critically think, but what does that mean to critically think and evaluate themselves and the world around them? And to constantly be evaluating who they are and in the context of UNCG and their transition. Um, and I think when thinking about student success is it's, it's in transition, it's ever evolving. And so what's gonna be working at the beginning, middle and end are gonna be two very different things. And so we do a lot of work checking in with students, monitoring their progress, um, anything from, we have an assignment called Meet With Your Triad, where we essentially create a triad support network between their instructor, their peer academic leader and their academic advisor. So to guarantee at least three different touch points outside of the classroom, it also gets them used to having conversations with faculty um, or student leaders, engaging in asking for help, getting connected to resources, um, a little bit of networking too, depending on kind of where that conversation goes. Um, and that's in addition to, we meet essentially two, three times a week for the, the full course semester. Um, so I think opportunities where you can touch base, check in with students and critically, prompt them to critically think. Um, we also do a variety of reflective assignments throughout the year. So a couple of them, we ask them to go out and engage in a variety of different things. It could be anything from an academic achievement center workshop um, to a career fair to, um, you know, if a faculty talk is happening across campus that we're trying to highlight um, that we think would be particularly interesting. Um, we also partner with, for example, like the Counseling Center, they've done some really great workshops and like kind of group therapy sessions around transition that help them get connected not only to the Counseling Center as a resource, but to hear kind of they're not alone in this transition, which is really helpful. So those reflective assignments that students have to go out and actually engage and connect and then come back and critically think about what it is that they did and kind of why they did it and what value does this add to their experience at UNCG and then Really, I would say not most important, but kind of the most important thing, like now what? Like, where am I gonna go from here that now that I've been connected and I know this information? Um, we've got a couple other reflective assignments that again, kind of touching base, uh, checking in with them throughout. So I think anything, um, because things are so rapidly changing in the world around them and what they experience one week is not gonna be the same as the next. And so just wanting to make sure they know that they've got a place for them and they've got a support system. Um, and there's easy ways to do that in class, out of class, and through the assignments. Um, so hopefully, Laura, that helps answer the question a little bit, but I'm happy to share any further insight too. Yes, thanks, Emily. And, and certainly, Emily, if you have any links to any kind of key resources or assignments, if you can put them in the chat, I think that would be great um, for folks on the call. 
Emily, I think is a great resource as you're thinking about transitions materials and how to go through those kind of pieces. Cause I know many of us, I always joke about like the six styles of note taking. And most of us are like, there's six styles and there may be more now. Um, but Emily might be a really great place to start, to start thinking about what are some of those materials that you can start thinking about adding into your courses. Jennifer, you being in the residential colleges um, are tackling foundations from the other direction um, as part of content of a traditional curriculum course. Can you maybe share some examples of some ways that you guys are operationalizing these in a content disciplinary course? Yeah, thanks, Laura. I think what, so in the residential colleges, we have multiple sections of foundations courses, and they're all tackling foundations from dis different disciplinary lenses or from different topics. Um, what we found in our curricular planning and really leaned into as we, we started teaching these courses this fall was that you know, there are certain aspects of transitioning to life at UNCG, to being a college student, to being a Spartan, um, that we felt like we needed to expose students to whether or not it was directly related to the, the disciplinary content that we were covering in the course. At the same time, we know that this content will most resonate when students have the opportunity to put it to practice. So we have a little bit of both going on. So in the early parts of the semester, we're introducing students to resources across campus that they may or may not need to tap into to study the course content. So we do have representatives from our counseling and wellness come into the classes to, to meet with the students and talk about those services because we know that students need that support even, even though we probably are not tapping into that in the, in the course and certainly not specifically in the course content. At the same time, we have resources, whether it's the digital act studio or the writing or speaking centers that we do have expectations to, in the study of the content that students utilize those resources and put them into practice. And so we may introduce the resource or the service early in the semester and then give the students multiple opportunities to engage with a particular office or individual resource, multiple points throughout the semester, going back to, to Jenny talking about that scaffolding with many assignments that kind of lead to something more larger, more formative at the end um, or more summative at the end so that the students are having multiple opportunities to engage with that resource, see how that particular resource is helpful in the study of the particular disciplinary or topical content, and then showcase the ways that they've kind of built on that experience throughout the semester at the end of the semester. So we have found from like starting the course from the disciplinary foundation or the topical foundation and incorporating the, the transitional and academic uh, student success content, that it's helpful to do some of that as more a standalone focused uh, lesson, if you will, um, or series of lessons, and then follow that with intentionally incorporating and scaffolding that into the lessons and assignments throughout the semester. Great, and so I do wanna just take us a step back because um, folks may not be aware that we have four types of foundation courses here on campus. And so um, one of which is kind of, in it's in the transition material is embedded in a disciplinary course, similar to how Jennifer was describing, Francis, you teach one in philosophy. The other three versions, Emily, could you describe them to folks um, since they're kind of all in your wheelhouse? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, we've got 70 sections between fall and spring, and there's a couple different, um, I guess you could say versions or, uh, or models within the FOE 101 program. Um, one is kind of our standalone, traditional, three credit hour foundations FOE 101 course. Um, we work with a variety of academic units if they would like to par partner with us in terms of cohorting their students. So let's say, um, I heard history as an example, so we'll just keep picking on history earlier. If history wanted all their students to take the course together, because it does provide us an opportunity to kind of ground some of the transition work in the work in which they're doing in their other courses, hopefully, um, for history. It helps connect them in terms of, you know, just even our conversations and our language and the examples and in material that we're covering, we can gear it to those students in terms of what they're experiencing. And then honestly, that peer to peer connection, 
you know, knowing instantly that the students in the same room as them are also history students. And not that students don't change their major, we absolutely know that they do, but it at least forms that initial like click in terms of conversation and starting point um, to give them that kind of common ground moving forward. Um, we also partner with some academic units um, from a two plus one perspective where we take uh, the FYE credits, uh, sorry, the FYE content into essentially two of the three credits. It's still one three credit model and course, um, but then we partner with academic units for that last one credit to bring in and tie in their specific um, what content they would like to be covered with first year students. So in theory, you know, we could be talking about academic success skills and whether that be time management, note taking, study skills, any test taking, anything of that nature. And then really, let's say we're working with the biology folks, they could be applying what does that mean to study skills in the, in the sciences, in the biology field specifically. So taking it from like a general, hopefully helping them in all of their courses, but then applying it specifically of like, okay, how do I actually do this as a biology student? How do I survive as a biology student here at UNCG um, starting very early on? So it's really nice in the sense that we can take um, what we know to be a really solid curriculum and course, but then apply it to that specific discipline. So those would be the two main ones that, that we're working with. Um, we're also working in some other versions with tailoring some assignments and whatnot. That way, again, it's bringing both in classroom, tying to the academic unit, but then also what are they doing outside of the classroom to kind of support all of those things moving forward. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Thanks. Um, so just a reminder to folks, if you have questions that you want to ask the panelists, please feel free to put them in the chat or even raise your hand and we can call on you if you prefer to call them out. Um, we certainly have time for some of those questions. As I'm waiting for folks to formulate any questions, Jenny, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more since you were the foundation's faculty fellow last spring. Um, one, a little bit about the Canvas site that folks can enroll in with resources, but then two, if there was anything you were really hearing from faculty and folks getting ready to teach these courses as either concerns or questions that they might want to tackle that could help some other folks think about as that they begin teaching these courses. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I am going to pull up the uh, Canvas organization and then I will share my screen so you don't have to see all of my Canvas courses. Um, so, okay, here we go. So the, uh, as the Mac Foundations Fellow, I worked with um, a couple of other fellows, including uh, Sam Harlow, who is here, who was the Health and Wellness Faculty Fellow. Um, Francis Boddenberg was the Integrative Learning Faculty Fellow. And then um, Harriet Bailey was the Diversity and Equity Faculty Fellow. Um, so we have, a course, a Canvas course that I created, and it's really similar to the one um, that Sam created. I used the hers as a model just to be, to give credit where credit is due. Um, and this was really meant to be, or is still really meant to be a sort of community of practice, an online virtual community of practice. Um, and so it's got information about Mac in general. It's got a lot of information, of course, about the foundation's competency. Um, so I, okay, there's, and there's a question in the chat, which is great. And then I have modules set up in here. Um, obviously, again, my area of expertise is information literacy. So I, I had a lot of uh, uh, content to, to provide there, um, but there's also some transition content related uh, or transition related content in here. Some information generally about teaching first year students. Um, and then I was hoping folks would share some of their syllabi and assignments. We haven't had that happen yet, but there's still plenty of opportunities for my foundations instructors um, who would like to do that. Um, and then some campus resource lists. This was, this was a huge request um, from faculty and who were teaching and faculty instructors teaching in foundations competencies is, um, you know, lists essentially of different um, co-curricular resources, lists of people they could contact in other areas. So for a lot of us, we might, um, I, I think being in positions like, uh, like Laura and Jennifer and Emily and I are in, we get a lot of exposure to a lot of different campus units, right? We partner with a lot of different people because we are in 
um, you know, we're in sort of unique positions, but most folks who are, you know, faculty within a department, you know, maybe they've worked with the writing center and the speaking center and the library before, but they don't know a lot about the counseling center, which has come up a couple of times here, or, um, you know, how you get support from the digital act studio or things like that, right? So having those kind of lists was a really big request. And then as Jeff said in the chat, um, some of, let me go back to the homepage here, um, two and three here, SLOs two and three, develop goals and plans related to personal purpose, interests or values between self and community, and then building connections between self and community relationships with peers, faculty and staff. Um, I think I may have missed a word there when I copied and pasted this in, um, such as UNCG, college student department, special interest groups, et cetera. Um, so these, these were, these actually, these first three, we had a lot of questions about. One of our foundations instructors, I believe it's in the discussions, but it may have been, it may have actually been a message. Um, uh, Jeff, Jeffrey Kaplan has created a bunch of fantastic videos that I know people are using in other foundations courses that talk about all kinds of things related to academic skills, but also things like student loans, like things that are going to be long term um, of long term importance. So kind of a mix of think about this for your future and also things like think about this right now, how to write an email to your professor. Um, and so this is a yep. Yeah, so the videos are available. I'm gonna go ahead and just pop this playlist and I'll also add it to that doc. Um, these are really, um, they're really well done um, and they're very accessible. And I think it's cool that they are, um, you know, they're coming from, I wanna say Jeffrey is in philosophy. Is that right? Okay. Um, I was gonna say psychology because, you know, they sort of sound the same. Um, so we've got, we've built some community here, but we'd love to build more. And I'd really like to have people join. And uh, I believe, yes, Laura put the self-enroll link. You can absolutely self-enroll in this course. I would love that. Even though I'm not a faculty fellow for foundations right now, I am still trying to keep this course generally updated. I've sent a few messages out to folks to kind of check in. Um, and so this is this is a community. And again, I hope that it becomes a place where people start sharing assignments or talking through questions or their struggles that they're kind of dealing with. Um, so I will uh, stop sharing now. But Laura, do you think did that cover the, the course? I think it did. Perfect. Um, and then as you stop sharing, I'm going to actually just pull up if I can. I might not be able to. Um, Oh, okay. On this computer, I can't share screen, but um, specifically getting to Jeff's questions about SLO two and three, Emily and Jennifer, um, and even Francis, if you want to be more than an, um, a standby participant, could you maybe share a little bit about how you've approached SLO two and three, that that might help Jeff think through some different ways of thinking about it? And I'll put the SLOs in the chat. Um, so one thing I'll share from the vantage point of the residential colleges where we have a really immersive experience with the, the students inside and outside of class is that um, SLL2, I believe it is, is about those, those personal values and, and sense of purpose and goal setting. Um, it, often we'll hear our, our students talk about it in terms of adulting. Right, so they're coming to UNCG out of experiences where they have largely been told um, what they need to do, when they need to get up, where they need to be, even what they should think. And so for many of our students, this transition to college and to UNCG it is an, also a transition to finding themselves. Who am I? What do I value separate from what other people have told me I should value? How does that influence the way that I participate as a learner at UNCG? How do I participate as a peer in the social environment? How does it influence the way that I engage with the larger Greensboro community, with the campus? 
how I determine what my major is going to be, um, the types of activities I involve myself in on campus. That is a major undertaking. And um, our students are going through that process and sometimes can have a lot of difficulty with it. And I think that lends itself to these larger conversations we're having about student mental health and well-being. So I find in our foundations courses that we can, again, going back to scaffolding, we can provide some supports there, um, whether it's facilitating certain activities, giving certain reflective prompts, um, engaging them in particular types of assignments to really get them thinking about who am I? Um, how does this connect with the type of learner that I am or that I want to be? And how does that then set me on my path here at UNCG and then after I graduate? And so that's what we try to incorporate into our foundations courses is really giving students that space to reflect on themselves. And you can do that in connection to the discipline of the, the course that you're teaching um, or the, the topic through which you're exploring things by really getting them to make connections between the course content and themselves, between the course activities and themselves, between the types of co-curricular experiences you have them engage in or assignments and reflections you have them engage in. Um, I'll pause there and, and I'm sure Emily's got some really good ideas too here. Yeah, I think I would second everything Jennifer just shared. We do a lot of some of those similar conversations. We also have conversations around, and, and so again, values, strengths, identity, um, culture, again, both, you know, college culture and UNCG, but even broadly, more speaking, uh, especially in the world around us, not that this is anything new, but it, it matters. And so having those types of conversations, at least starting them, you know, FYU 101 is not the only, hopefully not the only place um, where these conversations are being had, but to start these conversations and get them plugged in and interested in furthering developing themselves, because as much as you know, obviously I want them to do well in the course um, and the, the purpose is hopefully helping them succeed at the university, but it, it's so much more than that too. So while we only get 16 weeks with them, um, a lot of what we try to focus on again is those, those different lessons, um, including things like growth mindset, resiliency and perseverance, some of that skill development that hopefully again is setting them up for success in their other courses you know, and even their time beyond UNCG. Um, and so kind of putting theory to practice, we have our students develop a success plan at the end of their semester where it's taking kind of everything we've talked about. It's the equivalent of their final really for them, but a success plan and project where they have to talk about their academic success, kind of where they've been, where do they want to go and how are they going to get there. And same with their personal development and their connection to the university. Where are you? What have you done? What, what do you still need to do? And what is your kind of plan of action moving forward? That way, every student, when they leave our course at the end, um, you know, we don't see them their second semester and they're still going through a transition. And then the next year they're going to go through a transition and so on and so on. Um, even leaving the university will be another transition for them, but they've got the tools, the resources and the people behind them supporting them along the way. And they've got this action plan to kind of put in place. Um, I think our students really appreciate, yes, big conversations, but like the, okay, what am I going to do with this or why am I learning this? Um, so anything to actually give them that tangible takeaway that they can see them apply in, in their very next class the next day or maybe their next semester of, you know, I didn't do this and maybe I heard about it, but maybe I'm actually listening this time around and realizing there's value to this. And so I'm going to add, add it into my plan for the spring semester. Um, so that's been really helpful, I think, for the students as well. Great. And I, I did, if I can, Laura, just really quickly touch on the, the third SLO, which also gets to Francis's question in the chat about um, the, what we're seeing from students and engaging with community. Um, what we found in the residential colleges is that building that sense of community, even through optional activities that occur face to face, um, in my perspective, has been easier this year than in the past. Students show up because they're so desperate for actual in-person connection because of the Zoom fatigue that I think we can all, <laughs> all share. Um, the students, so we see a lot more engagement in out-of-class activities that involve some sort of face-to-face -face interaction. We've also seen a, a shift in some ways, and I don't know if this is related to the students' prior couple of years going through the pandemic or if this is part of a larger social shift in the way that we see people interact with one another and the type of discourse that occurs online and such. But our students, um, 
at least what we've seen in the residential colleges are very willing to articulate a perspective. Um, lacking perhaps in supporting that idea with some information literacies with some really tangible evidence from credible resources to be able to articulate, articulate that in writing um, versus just having conversation back and forth. So we've had to do a lot more support with students in developing their writing skills and incorporating information literacy to back up whatever sort of perspective that they have um, as, as part of the dynamic change a bit in, compared to prior years. Emily, I'm not sure if you're seeing that same thing in your in your FYE courses or if that's just our particular cohort of students. Yeah, I think since we have over a thousand and, and by the end of the spring semester, we'll have about two thirds of our first years. I think it does range. Um, one thing I should have said earlier when talking about the assignments um, is we undergo a curriculum review every single year because we know that what works one year will probably not work for the next cohort um, or it might, but you know, with some tweaks and, and whatnot. And COVID has definitely taught us that even more so. Um, and so even last year, obviously it was different. We, we were still actually face to face. And so we were really, for the most part, not always, but for the most part, the only face to face core students had last year. So that's a totally different transition um, than what we've ever experienced before and what obviously they've experienced. And then this year with more courses coming back, um, we're hearing a lot more about performance fatigue or exhaustion of not necessarily, um, not even from like an engagement, just always being on in terms of, you know, Zoom, you can turn your cameras off, you can, you maybe don't have to cut quite as ready and dressed up um, for course your class is and whatnot, but just the exhaustion of being on all the time and, and being actively a part of a community, um, which I think, again, much like they're saying, they're craving, but the reality of like, I want this versus how do I actually get there and do it after I've been kind of out of practice for so long. And now it's like, I don't even know how to like make eye contact or how to talk to people and start conversations, especially when you're in a new, somewhat scary environment. Um, and not that it's just scary, but just it's new and everything's new. And so even when there is no fear, there's always this like little bit there of hesitancy, let alone again, when they've been out of kind of that practice where they haven't been engaging in this way for so long. Um, that I think students, we've had a couple, you know, conversations this year where students are like, wait a second, hold up, what? Um, because it's just been so long since they've had to even think that way or speak that way or act in a certain way. Um, so we're seeing a little bit of that again kind of across the board, it varies for sure. Great, well, thank you all. We are right at a little bit over time. We're at 1245 and I know folks have got to get back to some other things. Um, there is a link that Jenny put into the chat, which has the assessment for this session. I believe um, you'll get an email from Sam later as well with that link again. Um, Jenny just put it in again, perfect, thank you. And so please do complete it. Um, I know Sam uses that data very much to help us inform kind of the next webinar as we get into that. But I would like to thank our panelists so much for their time today and I think all of their wisdom. I think all of us walked away with new ideas and some great new things to try. And I'm sure you'll be getting emails after this gets published. Um, and just want to thank everyone and hope you have a great afternoon. Thanks. Thank you so much.